Hey everyone, we're back with a new episode of Record Collecting with a Quill. Uh, last Sunday I uh, came home really late. Uh, I was uh, in Stockholm the whole weekend so I didn't have the opportunity to make an episode. But I'm back this week and the reason I uh, went to Stockholm was to see the hottest band in the world, Kiss, my favorite band. Uh, they came to Sweden to play their last shows i don't know uh stockholm saturday and gothenburg wednesday uh i had to go to both of course because you don't want to miss out um is it their last shows in sweden well i guess we never know what time will tell uh but i had a great time they're they're still a great live band so i thought we'd dedicate this episode to kiss and i'm going to talk about my favorite live album from them or not from them actually because it's a bootleg recording um, so it's uh, unauthorized but before we start you know what to do make sure you subscribe hit that little notice bell and share with your friends uh, well as I probably mentioned before uh, Kiss came on my radar quite early on as I think as a four or five year kid in the 70s and uh, you you became aware of them but more from a visual perspective than anything uh, sort of related to music um, and I think it was later on like 80, 83 or 85 uh, 83 or 85 84 um, when they uh, unmasked, uh, took the makeup off, I started listening to the music. And uh, I think Lick It Up was the first album that sort of uh, I started enjoying. And then the first album I bought as a new album coming out was Animal Eyes. Um, I was really into them uh, and I really wanted to see them as well because with Kiss, you know, the, the magazine OK here in Sweden was quite huge. They had a Kiss feature in, in just about every... Uh, every number so it was sort of you have to see kiss and they announced a, sh uh, a series of shows uh, for autumn 1984 and i tried to convince my father uh, to take me to uh, any of those shows they played Lund, Lund they played gothenburg and they played stockholm but as fate would have it i hurt my knee quite badly playing uh, football or soccer for you americans so i had to have uh, had to have a planned surgery and of course uh, when i got the date it was in october and i think it was just before the f the day before the first kiss show so i remember lying in hospital and hurting from sur surgery and reading in the newspaper i remember uh, quite vividly it was an uh, interview with Eric Carr, and i was quite bummed out uh, that i didn't get to see them uh, but i got later on uh, four years later in 1988 and that's a different story but uh, as i said I, I started buying all that and i bought everything i sort of could get my hands on and of course i bought the a live album and a live two album but they were sort of the the makeup era and being a kid from the unmasked area you, did, you didn't have any uh, of the later songs uh, and i remember all in all the interviews around that time it was always the question was when are you going to release release a live three and it was always are we going to make another studio album and then it's time for a live three but they didn't release one until in the late 90s, actually. Late 90s, actually. So what you had to do was buy bootlegs, bootleg albums, and I didn't know what that uh, was until um, this one came out. There was a book released in Sweden uh, in Swedish called "Shout It Out." It was released in 1985, and it has sort of have short story, uh, sort of history of the band. Uh, and it also have a discography and it also had a bootleg discography that I was really sort of didn't know what it was really bootlegs what is it uh, and my local record store didn't have any bootlegs at all but then I read an ad in the local newspaper where there uh, was a guy uh, ran an ad saying rare live albums by Kiss so I gave him a call and he had a couple of different albums and I don't know why, but for some reason, I decided to buy this one. Uh, Kiss, they only come out at night. And I think I bought it because it was recorded in Stockholm and sort of the show I really wanted to see. Uh, recorded October 26th, 1984. And what you have here is one of the 
best audience recordings, uh, audience recordings ever. And you have in general from the Animal Eyes tour in Europe, you have tons of great audience recordings for, for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it was someone traveling with a band who recorded them, I don't know, but there's a bunch of really good ones for sure. Um, and I got this home, started listening to it, and as I said, at first I thought the sound was a little bit weird, but but now knowing I heard a lot worse, uh, and today uh, I love the sound on this one, as I said, it is it's quite good. Uh, and it has Kiss 1984, and they rely quite heavily on songs from the three latest albums, Creatures of the Night, Lick It Up, and Animal Eyes. And this is sort of uh, the Alive 3 for me uh, growing up in the 80s, uh, because here you have Kiss, the 80s Kiss in all its glory. And I love this album. I've listened to it, as I said, by far the bootleg album I've listened to the most over the years. Uh, and as I said, it's really fun. The band are in great spirits. Uh, they hired a new guitarist for the Animal Eyes album, a guy called Mark St. John, who got sick. And then they had to hire Bruce Kulick as a stand-in for this tour. And he later on became an official member in December 1984. He does a really good job on this one as well. You have a band having a great time. Uh, they even jam a little bit at the end, uh, toying around with a couple of riffs, um, and, and in, gen in general a great show. And I remember this album mixed with the, the uh, features from the OK magazine it was sort of really sort of great for my imagination. You sort of uh, sort of just could drift away and and sort of make your own show in your head uh, and this is really good uh, usually with bootlegs you can have photos from from the wrong areas and stuff and I think this photo is not from Stockholm I'm not quite sure I think it's from the Loon show uh, because it was quite a small venue and they didn't have the the stairs that they had in Stockholm but it features a really nice booklet where I think the photos are from the Stockholm show I'm quite sure it is uh, where you have tons of photos so this certainly helped when you listen to the album sort of giving you an idea of what the show was all about and then what's quite fun as well and i think it was mentioned in the okay magazine as well that is that paul got stuck in the first song so he couldn't make it to a microphone so gene sings a couple of lines and it's quite interesting because as much as they play detroit rock city over the years he doesn't he do, don't it doesn't have any clue at all what the lyrics are so it's quite fun to hear him sort of just making up lyrics on on, on the spot but as i said a great show it's a great drum solo i remember i listened to that quite as well quite a lot as well a great version of black diamond from your car um what's also interesting is that as i said uh, I had the photos from the booklet uh, from the OK magazine, but a couple of years ago, uh, a couple of years ago, a guy mentioned on a uh, Kiss forum on Facebook that he had shot some Super uh, Eight uh, footage from this show, and th um, through Alex Bagdahl, the sort of Kiss go-to guy here in Sweden had it transferred and they also synced the audio uh, because the the footage was without sound but they managed to patch it all together with the sound from this one and all of a sudden you had I think it's seven or eight minutes uh, uh, of video from the show which was really really weird as I said because you, I've listened to this one so much and all of a sudden you could see what was happening so it, as great it was, it was also sort of interfering with my innovation of the show, but it's still so cool to have. Um, over the years, this one has been re-released a couple of times. You have this one, I think it's an American re-release. And it was also one of the first ever uh, bootleg CDs as well. And here you have a pretty good example, as I said, of uh, cover for bootlegs sort of uh, showing pictures of a uh, uh, lineup that's no way near this recording uh, and I think it's just a, a plain transfer of the, of the vinyl version 
And you also have this one, another great example. These ones, I think, I don't know if these, maybe Japanese or, or Korean. Uh, this, these ones even say recorded in Atlanta 1992, but it's incorrect. This is the first part of the Stockholm show, and this is the second part called Kolgin and Lovegun. Um, I not, I'm not sure really if the show is available on YouTube. It probably is. Uh, give it a listen, and if you find the album, it's um, it's quite common, uh, at least here in Sweden. I don't know if it was pressed here or elsewhere, but it's quite common. Um, so if you get a chance to buy it do it because it's a great great recording of 80s kiss uh, or listen to it on youtube um what else is there to say about it well i love bootlegs for, that's for sure there's so many great great recordings and shows to talk about but this one as i said is a special one uh and i looking back now i really wish i could have seen them uh, in 1984 and it still hurts me and will probably hurt, hurt me till the day I die. But uh, we, at least we have a great recording from the show. And that's better than nothing. And I've seen them uh, so many times over the years. So I think I, I could probably live without uh, seeing this one. Uh, but it would have been nice, wouldn't it? Uh, anyway, that's it for now. Make sure you follow us on social media. It's The Quill Sweden. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of vacation now, but next up is uh, writing songs for the next album, I believe. Trying to s sort out all the ideas. Um, thanks for watching and see you all again next Sunday with a new episode. That's it for now. Cheers. Bye.